All right, I think it's about time Let me get this started. All right, hello and welcome. Welcome to a live stream. This is a live stream wherein I will be doing some web stuff. Um, turn off the music. I do like the music. I mean, this, um, the track I was playing just now, I like it a lot, but it's sort of out of sync with my imagery because my imagery is like the serene waterfall loop, but uh, that's pretty intense. Anyway, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to a live stream. This is a live stream mainly intended for my students in DGST 101, uh, which is a summer class at the University of Mary Washington. And in this live stream today, what I'm going to be doing is continuing what I worked on yesterday, which is the web layout. And uh, I'm doing this to teach you how to do web layout stuff. Um, and also just because I'm kind of interested in it, but I, I think it'll be useful. Um, my intention is to try to get this more or less done today, and I don't think it'll take me that much longer. Uh, it'll just be kind of tedious in some cases because I'm going to have a bunch of images to put into place. But otherwise, you know, I think it should be uh, pretty, uh, I'm going for a pretty minimalist layout, so I'm not going to be doing a ton of stuff to it. Uh, and I say that because if you're watching this, you're a student in my class, and you're trying to figure out something on your webpage, then please ask, and I can try to demonstrate it here, and I would love to do that. Uh, the, the topic I'm continuing to investigate with the article I'm building is having to do with the color scheme in episodes of the TV show Loki, and I have not watched episode 6 yet. In fact, I'm going to watch it um, this afternoon with my kids, I think, after we're done with the stream. Uh, but I have extracted the images from it, and I prepared some barcode visualizations, but I am trying to avoid spoilers, so I did not do the... Uh, other things where you can combine them all together, together into a single frame because I think I would you, you kind of end up having to look at the individual images when you do that at least a little bit and I, I kind of I'd rather you know watch the show so I'm gonna uh, do that later but I thought it might be interesting actually to look at an episode I haven't seen and see what kind of conclusions I could draw from it by looking at it this way and I can't really draw many many conclusions but uh, you know a few observations actually come come to mind by looking at the um, looking at the palette barcode and so you remember this is the top one is the most uh, dominant color which is a lot of black but I think I think it's just because it's picking up the, the um, you know the letter boxing kind of frames it with the black bar at the top and the bottom that's part of it but also just like it's a visually dark TV show like I have to watch it with all the lights off um, for me to even see what's going on so I don't know what's going on there but if I look at the the actual the second and third most popular colors, it does seem like there's a pretty a couple of pretty big shifts, right? So there's a um, like a lot of blue, and that really stands out, uh, light blue. And then it's this kind of back and forth between like this yellow, yellow, and then there's like these orange stripes popping in here pretty strongly as well. And then at the end, it kind of it seems to be dominated by that sort of um, yellowish beige tone that really saturates the TVA part of the TV show. So it seems like that's probably where they're going to end up at the end. Um, that's just a, a theory, of course. But it is kind of interesting to look at, at this view and try to um, make sense of it. Hello, Chosen Clown. Good to see you online. Um, thanks for watching. Um, so this is what I'm working on a little after you can see my code from where I was the other day. And I guess I should go ahead and make sure that my login is still valid here. And it sort of is. So um, let me just make sure I can save changes. Okay, so uh, I like to keep things organized. So the left side has my code I'm working on and the right side has the output of it. So I'll go ahead and open up my, yeah, I'll get to the right folder here and then look at the code, the HTML code here, and then I'll pull this up in a web browser. So it's practice.djh101.net and I think it's, is it my web page or? No, it's project.html, there it is. Okay, so if you recall, uh, what I did yesterday is I kind of built some content here. I showed several different um, you know, the little tweaks and things to, to kind of create HTML content. I'm using the lorem ipsum text for now because I don't have, I haven't had time to actually write some, some thoughts. But it's, uh, that, that's good enough to try to figure out what things are supposed to look like. Uh, the major thing I did that is creating a lot of the, the look here is uh, I installed the Spectre framework. And so I've got it here in these lines, seven, eight, and nine. And I'm using a CDN to load these. Uh, that's obviously one way to do it. But uh, I think a better way to do it would be uh, to manually install it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next. 
um, because that's going to make me that's going to give me more control over it just in case for some reason the CDN goes down or it changes its path or something. Um, I don't have to worry about that if I've already got it on my server. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as the first step. Uh, this is not going to change anything about the look. It's just a better way to do it. So I'm going to try to install it here. All right. So this is going to give me, yeah, it's going to give me a zip file to download. And so that's fine. Uh, no, I don't need the source code. I just need. Yeah, I, need this, I just need the compiled code. Okay, it's in here though. Uh, you can't see it in the pop-up, but I'm going to go ahead and get it. Looks like I need, okay, Spectre Min, Spectre XP, and Spectre Icons min. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna download, I'm gonna actually just, I'm just gonna extract the compiled CSS because I don't need anything else. You, you, I know you can't see what I'm doing here. I'm just, I'm talking to myself as I do it. I'm just extracting files from from that. Oh, wait, I didn't want to extract all of them. <laughs> Hang on. What did I do? I still, I, I still, I, I've been using this Windows computer for a while, but I still get frustrated trying to find things. Okay, so there's Spectre. Okay. So there it is. Oh, my disk is getting full. I need to move some things around. I have a big disk, but I haven't bothered putting things on the big disk. I just have everything on my boot disk, which is conceivably risky. Anyway, okay, so I've got a bunch of files uh, here. I guess I could show my desktop briefly, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to show you them when I upload them. Uh, because I have everything working in this folder right here, I'm going to just um, do a little bit of organization to make this make a little bit more sense inside of the folder of this web page that I'm building. I want to make a couple of subfolders. First of all, I'll make one called CSS, which is going to contain my CSS documents. And I'll make one called images as well, because I'm going to be doing several of those. I have one already, but I'm going to add a few more images today. So I thought it might be useful to put that in there. And I will go here to upload the CSS files that I just extracted. Um, you know, if you wanted to do it from the The other way, then that's fine. What do, I, what do I want? What do I want? Spectre min? Yeah, I'll get spectre.min. And unfortunately, this little interface only lets you do one file at a time, which is kind of a drag whenever you have a lot to upload. You know, I'll just do it with all the minified ones. I don't need I don't need the full size CSS. Okay, so that should be good. And now I'm going to go to my source code for the HTML and just change the path here. So right now it's a path that points to the web and it goes to unpackage.com and that loads it from a remote source, but I want to load it from a local source now. And in that case, I just need to type the path name to that CSS file. So I put those all in a folder called CSS within the folder I'm in right now. So this is a relative path name. If I start it with CSS and then uh, that is that CSS there that's corresponding to like where I am right now slash CSS that's my file location the file path and I just need to get the file names so I wanted to get uh, specter.min.css and what else yeah specter exp just copy and paste that and specter icons I don't think I'm using any icons, but it's nice to have them just in case I decide to. So I should save that source code. And then if I refresh the page, I shouldn't see any difference. And I don't, so good. <laughs> I don't see any difference because it's still loading the same CSS. I just loaded it locally instead of remotely. And it's just a little bit safer to do it that way. Okay, so here's the article. Um, I've been thinking a little bit about how to do this layout. And I don't know, I'm still, I'm still sort of undecided. Um, I'm going to make my code a little bit smaller so that I can kind of look at the layout and of in the larger size and see if I still like it um, this way I'm moving as I move a little windows around here uh, yeah this way I can see it a little bit better I do want to do something with like a left and right layout I think because um, that gives like a like a some text and then an image next to it because I think that'll look pretty good and I I guess the question is which image because most of my images are very wide they're these barcode images or they're the, the plot images which are also kind of wider than they are tall but i guess one of them could probably fit if i put it in a column kind of halfway you know left and right here 
Um, let's try it. So let's go to the source code and what I'm going to try to do is put an image that appears alongside of and to the right of this paragraph. So to do this, there's a couple of steps you got to do and it, this does get a little bit like wonky in terms of the code and you're going to end up with lots of kind of extra code it's, it'll look like, but it hopefully you won't be too bad. Um, so first of all, you've got to do the same thing you did up here where I've got class a div with the class equals columns and then I contain that, it, uh, then that contains another div with all these special column class names uh, that follow the schema from Spectre's grid system, which is what I'm working with here. And I just I just looked this up in the in the documentation. I don't know this stuff off the top of my head. Uh, but to do this again with uh, let's in this case we're going to try to divide this space into two. So that means that we need to use the call the the six grid the use the number six when we're talking about the um, size of the columns. So this is going to be the columns area, and I'm going to put one column here around the paragraph and then I'm going to put another column around I know that this image is kind of covering the other one I'll just move that over there and uh, yeah so I'm putting the other column I'm going to put the image inside the other column so I'm going to drag this I'm going to drag this image tag and drop it in here. So now that is in that one. And I want to make sure, yeah, I've got all the closing divs I need because I've closed that one and I closed the container of that one. So this one closed the second, closes the div class equals column. This one closes div class equals columns. Okay, so now I need to, do, need to tell it how big to make these columns. And I'm going to go with call six for both of these and see how that looks. I think this is going to look really squeezed and imbalanced, but I'm going to try it. Okay, I mean, yeah, it kind of does, but I think I can fix it too. So I think I have an idea. So if you take a look at, you can see the layout kind of as it grows. Um, I'm going to do two things to maybe make that look a little nicer. One of these is I'm going, to, I'm going to increase the width of the overall column that contains all the text. I'm going to just go ahead and make that call 10. So there will still be a fair amount of padding left and right, but it fits the page a little bit better, especially at this size. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. Um, and I know this, so you, know, you notice that there's a big white block down here now, this kind of empty space below the image. And I could fix that in probably two ways. One is I can add another image or maybe make this image taller. Um, since this is dummy text though, the easiest thing really is just to delete some of this text, which is, you know, it doesn't mean anything anyway. So um, this is why it's always better actually to work with real text because then you know what what you can delete and what you can't. Um, but let's just kind of, let's just chop some things off here. That looks like about the right spot. Yeah, that looks yeah there you go that's better i guess um it just you know it's more balanced it is still kind of awkward i think because that that, that image is still so wide it looks a little bit off but i'm i'm gonna go with it for now uh, okay so i wonder a couple other things about this might be fun to try i wonder if we can do a i wonder if inspector has a jumbotron jumbotron is like a is it, it's, I think, it, yeah, Jumbotron is a bootstrap thing and it's a way to make like a, a gigantic title for a web page. And uh, I don't know if this one has it, it doesn't seem to. Uh, maybe there's another name for it. Um, let me just see. I mean, because Spectre is so like minimalist, it, it might it might just not have that. I'm just kind of looking through what they call components to see if there's anything that might be similar. Oh, cards, those are kind of nice. Panels, those are cool. And and Marvel themed in their documentation too. That's interesting. Toasts. Okay, I've never heard it called that before, but okay. And accordions, yeah, I don't really need any of those.
Yeah, I don't really need any of those. I wonder where this timeline is. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so it does have a lot of nice components that I, I think could be useful, but... Oh, the hero. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, maybe I should do that. Hero is the word that I was thinking of instead of, um, like, they call it a Jumbotron in other uh, systems. But this is this is what I was talking about. Great. Okay, so we have hero small, hero large. Um, okay, let's do it around my for my title. Uh, so the title of my argument, my, my paper thing I'm making here, is Investigating Color Patterns in Loki. So let's make this into a hero instead of just a title. So we're going to do that this way by putting some text around it. I'm going to just, I'm really just copying from this documentation. So it's these two divs, class equals hero bg gray and also hero body. Um, and chosen clown just asked if there will be office hours today. I mean, there's, yeah, there kind of always are. Like, you know, if you have a question, just we can talk. Um, I'm going to be grading, so I won't be like online in the office hours channel, um, just because I, I'm going to be recording videos. But um, if you see me with the green button, you can, I mean, the green dot, you can get my attention that way, and I can hopefully respond. Um, okay, so that's good for there. But if you have a you know specific question, especially just you know if you can type it in the in Discord, I can always help that way. If it's that kind of thing, sometimes I think with this kind of stuff, uh, sometimes describing the problem is, is a big challenge. So if that's where you're stuck, then um, you, we can talk about it. All right, great. So uh, investigating color patterns in Loki now has a much bigger presence on the page. It's pretty large. I kind of wish it would go full width, though. I kind of want it to not be constrained by this column. So I'm going to actually take this hero bit out of my columns and see how that looks. So I'm going to see if it, first of all, I'm going to try to keep it inside of the container. I don't remember what this is going to look like. Oh yeah, that's better, but I notice how it goes. Um, it still leaves some padding. I really want this to go edge to edge. So I'm going to take this out of the container uh, here. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So that's looking pretty good. Now I could do a couple of things to make this text of the title not appear so close to the edge. Uh, I feel like that's really bumping it pretty hard. I wonder, uh, see, I can do two things. I can make it aligned center, which is one thing that titles often are, but I, I personally like a, a left aligned title. Um, I'll show you both ways to do it in case you want to try this. Um, so within my way of written this, I do have this area to write my own CSS. It's not something that I've, I, I, I'm using because I'm really relying on Spectre for almost everything so far, but of course I can write my own CSS here to tweak things. So if I want to, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple things here um, for the text for the uh, text of the h1 header to be in the center I can use a property called text align and assign it the value center and see what difference that makes and there it goes so it looks pretty good the way that is I mean that turned out to align line up pretty nicely but it's still going to be crowding the sides if the size of the window changes um, as you see here so you know that might might be okay it might not be a big enough issue to worry about but I can change that actually by putting another uh, the same kind of column container thing that I did around the um, around everything else in, in this location inside the hero. Um, I wonder if there might be an easier way to do it than what I'm thinking of, which is more of like a like I'm wondering if I'm wondering if I can combine divs. Like if I can make the hero body also a container, and then. Or maybe even like make it just columns. I wonder if I can do this. Yeah, I'm worried that it, it it's going to need all three in a row, but I'm going to try it without. But I wonder what if I did. No, no, that wouldn't work. I was thinking, what if I made the H1 tag itself a column? But I don't think that'll work because I want it to go. Like I want it because the column it contains and it needs to contain something. Okay, so column call ten, right? So this should make it line up with the uh, the, the left edge of the text in the article, but it didn't. Okay, so that's interesting, but. Not super surprising. Oh, well, you know what? Maybe the centering is still applying. Let me try turning off the centering. Maybe that's, yeah, that, no. Okay, so the problem is I didn't, uh, something didn't work right here. 
Uh, so maybe I do need to make it an, an additional div uh, like that, like class equals container, and then div class equals columns. This seems like a lot of a lot of code, uh, a lot of stuff doing things that are essentially redundant. Um, okay, well then move this into the middle and see how that changes things. No, it didn't change things. Okay, well, why not? Let me think. Oh, because of the offset. Right, because it's not call 10, it's call 10 MX. Right, that's right. It's with the this bit here. This class will assign it what it needs in order to get into the center. Okay, so that's all right. Uh, so in that sense, I probably did not need this extra bit here. So let me rewind a little bit here. Um, I'm going to take those divs back off and put columns back here. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, there we go. So now they're lined up. They're a little bit off. But now the I here aligns with the I here, and that looks good to me. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, now I can do a couple other things to make this look even fancier. I can make a background behind this image to make it look kind of, you know, I think that would be pretty striking. I think I'll probably do that. Uh, in doing that, I probably want a bit more of a gap here because I feel like that H, that, that H2 is really hugging the top there. So I'm gonna probably move that around a little bit. Um, I think actually moving it into the column would probably give it some more padding and it makes sense to do that just conceptually, so let's see how that goes. No, that made it worse, what did I, no, because it just, it still is trying to collapse that space. So let's put it back out, but, um, you know, I can do a couple things here to add some extra space, uh, probably. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tweak the layout uh, with my own CSS. All right, so this this div that I created that has the hero aspect and all the columns and stuff, that's just any old, old div. Um, but I wanted to give it, let's see, yeah, it's got this special you know class hero. So it, when I want to refer to that div in CSS, I can refer to it by class name instead of by element name. So the H1 that's the element name that's the selector there. I can use a different selector which is going to be the element name which is or the element class, which is uh, hero, and you in indicate that by using the period. So it's dot hero or period hero, and then I can uh, add whatever other thing I need. And basically I wanna add some more space between it and the thing below it. So that's a, uh, a property called the margin. Margin has to do with the part of the, the block that you're looking at and the, the space between it and anything else next to it or above it and so on. So let's do uh, margin, let's do uh, two REMs. See how that looks. That might be a bit, that might be too much. Um, okay, so I did something wrong here. I, I gave it a margin of two REMs instead of a margin that only applies to the bottom. So that added that space on the left and the right, which I don't want, actually also on the top. So I'm gonna change my property here. That shouldn't be margin. Um, that's just gonna be margin bottom. So in this case, it's only gonna apply my correction here, the two REMs to the bottom margin, which is what I wanted. Uh, in the first place so that yeah that looks a lot better um, that gives it a lot of space and everything's kind of back to normal cool okay so let me make a, a couple other things let me put a background image behind the hero and see how that looks um, i could also change some colors around but let's try let's try doing the um, the background image so let me put an image here i think one of those um, some slice images would look pretty good as a background so let me try doing that I'll upload one of them here. Let's do S1. Uh, but you know, actually I need to convert those first because image J, uh, when it creates them, it makes them as TIFF images, T-I-F, and those are great images for storing a lot of image data, but they actually don't work in a web browser. So I need to convert it first. Actually, I was gonna do it on my own software, but uh, I'll, uh, to keep things fully in the web, I'll go ahead and do it on the web. Uh, I like using this website Cloud Convert whenever you have a file that's in the wrong format. It's a pretty good way to do it. Um, so let's see how this goes with one of these images. Um, selecting the one right now, let's do this one. And uh, so this is the file that I produced yesterday using ImageJ. 
the TIF file, as you can see here, and I want to convert this to something else. I'm going to make this a JPEG. Um, there's different settings of JPEGs, and you can adjust those here within Cloud Convert, but the default is usually fine, so I wouldn't worry about that unless there's something going wrong. Okay, so just should take a minute here. Not even a minute, probably. There it goes, it's ready. So now this is an image that is a JPEG image, and I can use this in my web layout. I need to download it first to my computer, because that's where I'm keeping all my stuff. And then I can upload it. It's not where I want to put it there, I want to put it there. So now I can upload it. Great, so there it is. Um, some frames, no credits.jpg. Uh, but I'm actually going to put this in the image folder instead of leaving it in the top level of this directory I'm working in so that I can keep things a bit more organized, just like I am with the CSS. Now that I have that there, I'm going to use a CSS declaration to stick that into the background of the hero element that I created for my title. <laughs> Oops, oh, didn't want to make it that big. There we are. So let me try this. So to set a background image in CSS, the property that you're assigning is, as it says, background image. So uh, in this case, what the background image wants is a path, a, a URL for the uh, the image that, that you want to appear there. And this is kind of similar to loading an image in an image tag. Uh, you need to know the location of the file you want to load, and if that file it happens to be in the same folder that you're working in, then it's just the file name. If it's in subdirectory of that folder, then it's that subdirectory's name and then the file name, which is what I have in this situation. So in this case, it's images forward slash uh, the whole title. So it's kind of long, so let me just copy and paste it to make sure I don't type it wrong, because if you type it wrong, it won't work. Okay, let's see how that looks. Oh, did something wrong. Okay, didn't work. Let me see. I don't think you need quotes there, but I'll add them there and see if that does what I wanted, and it's still not working. Okay, so when something doesn't work like this, there are a couple things we can do. We can try to figure out uh, what it tried to do and then see if there's some something going on. I think I have a couple of theories, but I can learn about those theories by using the element inspector. So if you're using Chrome, you can right-click, and, and, and I know OBS isn't capturing the, the window that pops out or the little, the little options thing, um, but if I right-click it, then I can use the uh, element inspector. I can go straight to that. So this is the part that I'm having a question about. So I'm going to right click it and then select inspect. This only works in Chrome, but there's a similar tool in um, in in Firefox. And I'm just looking, sorry, I'm just looking at the code. I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. Because it says it's not applying it. Oh, I wonder why. I wonder if this is it. That's it, okay, interesting. So if you can see down here, let me make this bigger. This is the rendered CSS, so this is not what I wrote, this is what the um, what the web page uh, understood, and that's different, right? The, the web page is not just doing what I tell it to do, but it's also listening to Spectre. And right here, Spectre and what I did got into a fight. Uh, in other words, CSS is all about properties and inheritances, and specificity matters. So the more specific you make a declaration, the more likely it is to work. And so sometimes getting CSS to work is, a, is kind of a game of trying to figure out how to be more specific or how to override something else. And it's, it's an interesting challenge, uh, but it can be a little frustrating. The element inspector helps a lot because what it does is it shows me that this is the rule I wrote, background image, URL, blah, 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 but it's got a line through it, which means that it's been superseded by something else. There's something else that is setting the actual background, and it happens to be right here. So this background with that color and then exclamation point important, uh, that is the one that's actually being applied, and it, it is overruling the one that I wrote. Um, so if I check, uncheck the box next to it, it'll disable what they wrote, and then it'll apply what I wrote. And that shows me that, yes, the image is in fact working, and you know there it is. Uh, so I, I'm going to do some other things to make that image look like more logical, but that's it's there right now. Uh, but let's see if we can make sure that it's going to work uh, because this change that I did right here was just a preview. This doesn't actually um, cause any difference to apply in the web page. Uh, so I need to come up with a different way of saying use this instead of this. And I could use the exclamation point important notation, 
um, I, you know, it's, it's discouraged. Like it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a workaround, but you know, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into, yeah, I'm not going to go into that. So I'm just going to add important on mine and see if mine overrules it. It, it may, it may not. Um, let's see. Okay, so that worked, I guess. Uh, so in this case, now it kept both rules, but it applied mine first, which was the, the image. So, okay, that worked. Um, at least I think it did, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's one way to do it. That's kind of, uh, it's kind of kludgy. Like, it's kind of a duct tape solution, but it, it got the job done in this case, so I'm not going to overthink it. Um, a, a, other ways you could do this would be to make this specifier, the, the element here, make the... the um, the selector, right? I keep getting the words wrong, uh, but it, it, I could make this selector more specific, and then it would probably work if I did something like uh, add the BG image class to it, uh, or if I, um, uh, I don't know, uh, if I made it uh, have more parents to specify it. This is one way to do that, but I don't think that's that important because it's working. So I'm going to leave it to leave it the way it is. Keep it as simple as possible in terms of the writing. Okay, so this image is actually quite a lot bigger than what we can see on the page. And so in terms of what's showing up here, we're just seeing the top left corner of this image. And the part that I was actually hoping would be the background is more or less the middle, which is kind of way kind of over here. So there are some things you can do to change the um, size and orientation and other things uh, about a background image using CSS. And this is um, a, a feature of CSS3, which is what we're up to right now. And I think CSS3 has been around since like 2006, but it still feels cutting edge to me. Uh, so the, I, but I don't remember how to, how to do it. So I'm going to, um, this is the kind of thing I don't do that often. So I thought, you know, this is what, this is what um, W3Schools is for. So these are the ones I'm, I'm interested in. So background position is one of them that's going to be important. And also, I also want to do background size, but they don't have that on this page. Uh, maybe it's part of this. Okay, so let me let me just do let me just do the uh, position first. Is it on this page? Okay, I, mean, I just need to go through the chapters. I think so. The background image gives me the URL. Okay, I already did that. Background repeat. I don't want it to repeat, so I'm going to say no repeat. I just want one of it. Okay. Background position. There we go. So I want this to be. Um, I want this to be in the middle, really. So is it top or is it middle or center? Okay. Middle turned green. That might be right might not be let's see if it makes the difference that we want it to no it didn't okay so maybe center is what it wants um, no okay maybe I wonder I think I can just set this with size values so let's try 50% Huh. Okay, so this isn't quite working. Let me see. Maybe I should actually try it out in their thing. Okay, so their thing has uh, background position is right top. Great. Okay, so I could also probably say left top. Right. Okay. Left middle is kind of what I want. Maybe it's too big. Maybe it's just like it needs. Maybe it's um, talking about like what is the origin of the image. Huh. Okay. Let me read on here. Background attachment. Um, that's just going to make it scroll or not scroll, and I don't care for that. Okay. Great. So I'm not sure why background size isn't covered in this, uh, but oh, here it is. Wait, I mean, here's a uh, reference to it. So let's see, um, background size can be auto or it can be um, different things. It can be cover uh, or it can be contain or it can be 
something uh, percentage based. So cover is going to be that it's going to make sure that the image is always big enough, and contain is going to make sure that the image always appears entirely. So let's try contain because that's probably what I want. I do wonder if you can do contain horizontally but not vertically. I don't know. Let's find out. So let's do contain. See how contain looks. Okay, it's still not doing anything. <laughs> it didn't change anything. Um, why isn't this changing anything? Okay, what about cover? Huh, okay, so something so sometimes when things happen like this where you think something's gonna change and it doesn't. You have to kind of step back a little bit and think, am I actually doing what I think I'm doing? So I think I'm applying these rules, but maybe I'm not. Maybe these are being overridden as well. Let's take a look and see. Yeah, they are. Great. So that means that um, I need to keep applying the important thingy on all of these. So yeah, okay. That's a little kind of that's kind of a bar, but uh, that's all right. So what we're going to do is change a couple of things. Um, to uh, so we don't have to keep adding the exclamation point important. Uh, I'm going to instead change the selector so that all of these rules will override something else. And this is kind of an old fashioned trick, which I think will work. Oh no, it didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's still not overruling Still not overruling the important. Man. <laughs> okay. Maybe this is why using important is this kind of a, a drag. Okay, so this this is coming from the BG gray. I wonder if I just got rid of the BG gray, that would um, not what whatever's left wouldn't be quite as important. Okay, yeah, so that that's all that's what I needed to do. Like I don't need the background to be gray, I need it to be this image, so I've done it this way and that should should be good. Uh, so now I don't have to do the important and also these two rules that I added are, are working. All right, so let's do background size. Not, I don't know, I, I kind of want the middle part of the image and, and not the edges if I can do that. So I wonder if I could make the background size something like, you know, 120%. Okay, so that seems like it works, but now it still is not in the, the right place. So let's try background position again. And now that I, I know that this rule will actually apply, let's see if it'll work. I think, I wanna say it's 50%. Like I think that that's how you address the middle or one way to address it. So let's see if that works. Yeah, there we go, that's what I wanted. So now it's a nice, like interesting, but not super distracting pattern in the background. And you can still see my title pretty clearly. Uh, I might want to change that color, but that looks pretty good to me. You can still see a little bit of that sidebar stuff that I was trying to get rid of. So let's make the background size, you know, a bit bigger, like, you know, 160%. And there you go. So now it's still, it's back to that nice, interesting pattern, but it's not super distracting and it's not, doesn't have any lines or edges within it. Okay. So that looks all right. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, is there... Are there any other, are there any questions, anything you would like for me to, to show you how to do if you're working on your web page? Um, this is, uh, I'm pausing to take a drink, so this is a good time to ask if you have any, um, any questions, or if you'd like me to, to explain what I just did in more detail. Well, seeing none, I'm going to move on to make a table to contain all of my images. And I think this is going to, I don't know, this is going to be a lot of, this is going to be kind of repetitive and redundant and it'll take me a minute. But what I'm envisioning is literally a, a table with six columns and then however many rows I need for each of the visualizations I've been creating. So the, the different barcodes, the plots, and then the averages or the sum, sum slices uh, things. So those are gonna to need to be pretty small images on this page, but I also wanna make it so that if you click on an image, it'll open that. If you click on a thumbnail, it'll open the full size of that image. Um, if I wanted to get really fancy, I can make that a modal pop-up that just comes straight at you, like comes out like a big pop-up, but leaves you on the page. 
but just because I want to try to get this done in 20 minutes, I'm just going to make it take a link somewhere else. Probably, but now that I say that, I really want to try the modal thing. <laughs> Maybe I should do the modal thing. Um, that's going to be something, uh, maybe, yeah, not this one, but the, uh, what is it? Is it an element or a component? What do they call this? Yeah, they call it a modal. So a modal is something like this, where you click it and it pops up and then, then you get to see it. Um, okay, so, but the code for each modal is, is this, like this would be a single one. And that's, that's a lot of code for each of those images. And I'm talking about, you know, 25 images now. So it'll be a lot of copying and pasting. And my code for this document is going to get a lot more, you know, convoluted looking. Uh, but we will, we will, we will, we will do it. All right. So, um, Oh, actually, maybe this is no. Okay, no, it does need to be pretty big. So let's let's take a look at this HTML structure. So there's one div that is called modal, and then I guess you have to say. Oh, you know what? This is going to take some JavaScript. I don't I don't want to deal with JavaScript. <laughs> so uh, that's fine. I mean, I I can do that, but I don't want to right now. Um, yeah, it just it's going to be too much of a hassle. So I'll just do the old-fashioned way of making it a. a, a a tiny image that links to the full size of the image. Okay, so let's get these images online. Okay, so let me go up here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna end up with so many of these images. I really need to be um, thoughtful about my naming schema and my locations of things, so I don't get them confused with each other. Especially because they look pretty similar to each other. So I'm gonna make a sub sub directory for each episode, um, just to kind of help keep myself. Uh, straight with these. So I'll do it following the same structure that I have on my computer, which is S1E1 for episode one, uh, just to, again, make sure that I keep things straight. I did not want to make a new file. I wanted to make a new folder. S1E2, S1E3, S1E4, one e five. It's one e six. Now I will do some uploading. You know what? Before I do the uploading, I need to do some more file converting because I have all those uh, tips. So let me let me do that first. Um, so let's do some more tips. That's I did S1E1. Let's do two. So this website, cloudconvert.com, it's free to use, but if you do it like I'm doing it right now, um, you will probably run into the limitations. There's a limited amount of conversion time that they make available to you if you are just using it for free. So the, oh wait, did I already do this as a JPEG? Sorry, I just I noticed when I was looking at the folder that it looks like I may already have that, uh, at least episode two, I may already have a, no, what? Oh no, because that's episode one, it's saving it in the S1 folder, and that's S1E1 folder, and I do already have that one because I did that uh, a little while ago. Okay, so I'm just gonna do these quickly. My naming schema confused me for a second there. So here's S3. And you could do these in a batch, but I'm doing them one at a time because when you do it in a batch, you're more likely to run into the limitations of um, the free account with Cloud Convert. And like, well, the the account, like I'm not logged in right now, but what happens when you run into those limits is you can just log in and you can actually make a free account and then you can make multiple free accounts and uh, usually get your processing done um, anyway. 
so this is episode four. Did I not do episode five yet? Okay, I guess I don't have episode fives. Uh, yeah, okay, but that's all right. I can just kind of leave a spot for it. Okay, so uh, I've got these now converted to JPEGs, so I can start uploading some things. Um, where am I? So I'm in E1 here. So let's upload all the episode one files. So that's going to be the average, yeah, the all the barcodes. Let's do with let's start with raw average palette plot. And montage, and finally the sum. So, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six images per episode is what I'm working with here. So, it's kind of a lot, but there they all are. And I've tried to name these pretty consistently across all these, except for the first one I gave it did it twice. So I gave that one a special name. But let me just now that I have these for consistency, let me name this the same thing. Oops. What? Come on. Trying to delete the extra period. Ah. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So um, looking at these images now, I can see that some of these are pretty big. So these are 84 kilobytes to almost 2 megabytes for this one. I wonder why that one's so much bigger. Uh, and then, yeah, the other ones are, are not huge, but they're big. They're going to be big whenever they're all here. Because if you think of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have 36 images like this. So that ends up being a pretty big web page. Uh, so if you're looking at this on mobile data or something, it would take a minute for it to load. Um, I want to avoid that. So I want to make it so whenever you're looking at the web page here, you don't have to load the full size image. You can just load the tiny thumbnail, which will be quite a bit smaller. So I need to convert these into um, uh, a smaller version, basically. Um, so I guess I can, yeah, I mean, I usually just do this manually in GIMP. Um, I'm wondering if there's a way to batch convert it on Windows. I, don't, I know how to do it on a Mac, but I don't know how to do it in Windows off the top of my head. So let's see what I can find if I Google. Convert images Windows, <laughs> right? Not Google, but um, Windows. I mean, DuckDuckGo. So this is a Microsoft app. All right. Looks pretty basic and it's free, so maybe I'll go ahead and try it. Um, I don't usually like using a app someone else made like this for something so simple, but I'll try it. And if it works, I'll, I'll pull up whatever interface it creates and then I'll show you that. Okay. All right, well, let me add that window to OBS so you can see it. So here's this image converter thing I just downloaded and have literally never heard of or used before. So I don't know if it's going to work or not. You know, we'll find find out. So let's uh, add some images. Um, I just click the plus add images button. So I assume that's what I'm supposed to do. Let's see what we can do with this. So I'll just do S1 first and then I'll grab, I'm going to multi-select the images that I want. So these are the PNGs and the JPEG and select all those. Okay, there's that. Now for the output, I guess I need to choose a folder to put this in. So let me put it in the same place I was just now, the Loki folder, S1, E1. Um, okay, but this, that's the same folder where I am right now. So I'm gonna make a new folder just in case it, doesn't um, do anything with the file name. So this is the same folder I was in, Loki, 
um, S1E1, but I, then I made a TN folder for these to make thumbnails, hopefully. So let's see if this will work. So output format JPEG is fine. Configure resizing. Okay, so downsize to fit a particular width. Yeah, that's a good idea. So let me make it um, 120. That should be good. And I can do all of them at once, I guess, but this will be a good test. Okay, is it done? That was quick. Um, it says it's done. Let me see what the result is. Okay, the result is good. There are six very small images now. Except something happened, oh, I forgot. So the, the plot image is a PNG because it has a transparent background. And so that one looks weird because it actually created a black background to make it a uh, JPEG. JPEGs don't have transparency, so that's why. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo these. I'm gonna make these as PNGs, and that'll be that'll be better. Okay, hopefully that preserves the transparency. And it did good. So I know you can't see it, but that's that's what that's what happened back here. So um, let me delete the extra ones, and then I will upload these. Stick them in here. And then we'll be good to go with the first part of the table. All right, where am I? Um, so I don't need this for now. Let me get the converter out of the way and go back to the file manager. So here I am, and these are my uh, full-size images, right? But I'm going to upload my TN images. And I'm going to rename these TN thumbnail images so I don't get them confused because they did actually generate and they, they kept the same uh, same name. So I'm going to rename these also. They have underscore TN after their the main part of their name. Just so I know at a glance which one is which without having to open it or check the file size. I wish that converter software that I used gave me that choice, uh, but it didn't. At least I didn't see it, so. Right, where's that? Just, uh. Okay, converted all those, so let me upload them now. Yeah, and here again, it would be great if I could do this, uh, you know, in a batch upload, but you can't. The only way, you can, the only thing you can kind of do is you can upload a zip of all of your file, files and, and then you can unzip them once they are uploaded, um, which is sort of faster if you have a bunch of files, but in this case, it's actually probably faster just to click through them all. And so, okay, so now they're all uploaded here. I've got uh, a group of files and you can see that some of these are something.png and then some of these are something underscore.png. Um, I need my some frames is a JPEG, but everything else is PNGs. So I need to remember that when I put that into my HTML code, but otherwise this is looking okay. Now, I'm going to put a table here, and I'm gonna put the table just at the bottom of these paragraphs, just because, and uh, you know, I, you know, now I'll put it up higher just so we can see it more easily. Uh, I'll put it here in the, uh, under the data heading, um, but it doesn't really matter. So a table is a, an important structural element in HTML because it lets you organize and structure your data. Uh, back in the olden times, we used to use tables for layout uh, because there was not an easier way, but especially with uh, an elegant grid system like Spectre, there's there's no reason to do that. But also, it's, it's semantically incorrect because a table is tabular data. A ta table isn't layout information. It's, it's things that are meant to go together in rows and columns to be meaningful. So um, that's what I have in this case. I have uh, a table that I want to create of all these visualizations to organize them all and just kind of very clearly show you what they are. Um, so typing, it's going to take a lot of typing to create an HTML table that will actually work. If you want to know how to make a table, W3Schools, I'm sure, has a good tutorial that they always do. Um, but basically, a table has different components. And the main components that you have for a table are table rows. And then when you eat, within each row, you have table data cells. And the number of data cells uh, in each row should be the same if you want to have uh, a consistent number of columns. In this case, I have, I'm going to have six episodes total, but I'm going to also need another 
column to explain what is in each row. So I'm going to need seven TD table data cells in each table row that I create. Uh, so I'm also going to need a header row. I'm kind of waving around with my hands as I describe this because I'm visualizing it in my head. I'm going to need a header row to say which episode has for, for each of those. And then I'm going to need the data in each of those cells. Um, this would probably end up looking kind of squeezed into my layout as I've got it, but I'm going to try it, to, you know, just see how it goes, and then I can adjust the overall look of it later. All right, so I'm going to give it, uh, I'm going to do a, a T head and a T body uh, for the different parts of it. So I can do up here in the T head, I'm going to create one row, so TR is one row, and then I'm going to create, uh, like I said, seven columns, and each of those is or seven cells. Um, and actually, this is a header, so I'm going to use TH instead of TD for these. Um, so that'll, oops. I'm going to make these all line up visually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so then I'm just going to do it like this episode one, or maybe I'll just. Yeah, let's we'll just do it that way because I'm going to need enough space for this. Um, I wonder if this supports multiple cursors. Oh, it does. Oh, this is cool. Okay, sometimes in a text editor, you can multiply your cursor. So I'm holding down the control key and then clicking, and you can see the blinking cursor is actually multiplying. So now I don't have to keep switching to a new row to type the episode, the word. Of course, I could copy and paste the word episode, but like this, I can actually type in uh, four, four places at once uh, with that little trick. Um, not every editor will support that, but this one does, and I'm so I'm pleased. And then there's the numbers. But that's a, it's a cool trick. Whenever you have to do something that's really repetitive, um, then sometimes little tricks like that can actually save you some time and, and just make it seem like less of a drag. So, uh, all right, so I've got that in there now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make I'm going to make the full structure for this table and then put data in it because I think that'll be easier to go. All right, so after that header row, I'm going to have one row for, um, well, a row for each of these things, right? So, but each um, each one of these, and I am just gonna copy and paste in this case. Um, I wish it wouldn't jump me back there. I wanna go, I wanna go down here. <laughs> So it not, it's trying to help me out with the indentation, but I, I don't want to go there. I want to go here. Uh, right, so that's six. I need one more. There we go. So that's uh, six, those are seven columns for the second row. And now that I have this pattern of these TRs and these TDs, I can just copy and paste this multiple times uh, to make multiple rows. I wasn't even counting. If I end up having too many, I can always delete it. Um, but that's um, that's what we need to make those rows have that structure, and this should actually work. Now I should be able to take a look at it and see if I see how it looks. Um, there's nothing in it other than that first row, but at least I should be able to confirm that I haven't made any massive errors here. So, okay, so save and then refresh, front page, see if that looks like anything yet. Okay, it doesn't because there's nothing here, but that's what that's the beginning of it, right? It's starting, I'm starting to see it. Um, I wonder if Spectre has any neat little tricks for tables. Sometimes they'll, they might include a little, uh, some special classes to make it look a little bit nicer and cleaner, and it looks like they do. So it looks like it just needs a class table. Oh, we can make striped tables too. Uh -huh. Hoverable? What does hoverable mean? Oh, and yeah, scrollable tables, that actually might be really helpful too. So these are things that are that are provided by Spectre. Um, let's just do the basic one table, and that should be good enough, at least to see how it looks. And then we can come back and try something more fancy once we have the data in there. So okay, so that already looks more like a table. Great. Um, so let's figure out what each of those rows is going to be. So let's first of all start with uh, the barcode. And then the second one, we should make the um, uh, average colors, I guess. Uh, the next one was average height. 
palettes, then the montage, and then the plot, and then finally the sum slices projection. Okay, so it looks like I have more rows than I need, but that's okay. We'll leave them there for now, just in case. Okay, so there's those uh, labels that I created, and you can see that this is uh, distributing these things evenly uh, across this, and I'm gonna start sticking some images in here um, to see how it goes. I think it's already looking kind of squeezed, or looking looking like it will be squeezed once I start putting stuff, stuff in here, but that's okay. We can uh, deal with that if we have to. Now, this part is pretty straightforward at this point. I need to put some images in. Um, okay, so I just saw a chosen client. You just asked a question. It's um, uh, let's see if I can answer it. So you you have a map that's tangled together. Can you untangle it? Um, yes. <laughs> so it's something I might need to look at to see how to do it. But the couple of things there is a way to make your map static. So like the different elements, like the circles, aren't bouncing around randomly. Um, there's a way that you can actually just drag them and put them in a place, and they'll stay there. Uh, so that's one thing to look into. It's dynamic versus static layout. That's an option you can change in the cut in the um, in the in the decorate part of your editor. So try that. And then there's a, the other thing you can do is um, you can do different kinds of network analysis to kind of make make it dynamic, but have like centers of importance or or not. And you can change how those different uh, weighting factors increase or decrease the attraction between different elements, and then that might make it look less tangly if you make them like repel each other instead of attract each other uh, and those are things you can adjust in the decorate part of it um, so let me just um, I'll see if I can show you an example yeah I'm still getting that weird error from this uh, but this is my pretty convoluted map of a hypertext novel and it's just the, the names are just the names of each position in here and I think I've got this one actually set to be static so at least I'm well, maybe it is. Maybe not. Huh, things are kind of moving, kind of not. I don't know what I did. Let's see what I did here. I, I, it's been a while since I've, I've worked on this one. Um, okay, so let me switch to the basic editor. Um, you can size by any... Um, you can do a lot here. <laughs> but the, you've got a lot of options, and you can like learn about these different options in here. I wonder how I did... I'm trying to see how I did the static thing. I think the static is the word they use, or maybe fixed. Hmm. Let's see, maybe it's just one of the settings in here. Um, connection. Maybe it's just a preset. Oh, or hairball. Let's try. To, let's try changing these. No, I didn't really. What about auto. Yeah, these settings aren't really changing anything. I wonder if it's because this is something to do with the way I created this map. I wonder if I've made it so that each of these just has a fixed position. It might. That you, we saw that thing about pinning it in place. That's the terminology. So maybe I did go through and pin all these at one point. And that's why they're moving when I click on them. Yeah, it is actually. I'm just seeing here. This one's pinned. Yeah, the little icon there that says pin, that's pinned in place. So that's probably what you need to do. Um, like, you might have to do it manually, but um, now that that one's unpinned, you should see it wobble related to others. Although you're not. It repinned itself. Every time I click to move it, it seems to pin it. So you might find that that happens if you do yours. If you just start messing with them by clicking and moving them around into the different positions, that might, you know, make it work uh, for you. I don't know. Yeah, so that's not, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's what I would start looking into is trying to pin things in place. Or you can do different things with network analysis to make certain things uh, um, have values that you can use to assign size, which is what I've done here. So like this one, 
um, has a number of connections to it, and then I've dec decorated it by saying that it should be, um, I, I'm sizing this by degree, which, has, which is the number of connections. So if it's gonna automatically compute that for each of these and then adjust the size accordingly. So I don't even need to know what it actually is. Um, but if you look at it, you can see the number here. When I click on this one, S32, the computed uh, degree is six. And so that's going to be bigger than one where the computed degree is four. And these numbers, the degree four, that came from, that, that, that field just appeared there when I ran the network analysis, which down in the bottom right, you can see the um, metrics thing. It's like a little sort of chemistry beaker thing. And if you do social network analysis, you get these different metrics you can try to generate. So if you wanted to do that one, you would do degree, and then you click the button and it just runs that uh, computation to figure these all out. And then it gives you a field that you can use in sizing and also coloring and other things. So yeah, hopefully that helps. There's a lot you can do with, with Kumu, right? I mean, a lot of people just kind of scratch the surface with it, but you can really do some really elegant layouts and also really rich. I mean, for each of these uh, elements, you can make it have an image, like you can put a, a picture behind it. That would be cool. Um, you can also make the connections have different colors if, the, if there are different kinds of connections. Like these are all just basic connections, but I, I was looking at somebody's yesterday and there's like, uh, different kind of relationship connections. So like these two people are friends, so that's one connection type. Other people are dating, so that's a different connection type. You can make the connections have different colors and line types depending on those different connection types. Um, and that's something you can do with the styling if you go over here to the right and start playing around with those options. So that's, uh, yeah, so plenty to play with there. I, I hope you all have, you know, get, have some fun digging into, into that. Um, but I'm gonna go back to my, my table. I wanna at least get the first column and uh, do that. So actually, yeah, no, it's not, it's not related to Twitter, although you can use it for Twitter or something. Um, it just literally means like, what is the social structure here? Uh, if you imagine this as people, and, and really the word social network, like we kind of use that to mean, you know, Facebook, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Uh, really those are social media platforms. The word social network, you know, exists before that stuff. And we, we think of uh, just like the group of people that you know and that you're related to and that you socialize with, that's your social network. And that's a thing that has existed. It's just that Facebook is a company that's based on um, commodifying that and making that their, their, their business. Uh, but that's not necessarily the case um, for that concept. And so that's what's going on there. That was a cricket just flew over here. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my table. I'm gonna at least get that first column done, and then I'll wrap it up because I actually want to go watch uh, this episode, and maybe maybe I can do that. Um, okay, so I've got these images here, and they're I mean they're in my file manager, they're in this location, and they all have that this same pattern. Um, so I'm gonna just gonna stick them in here for the barcode column. Um, I'll do that one first because I'm here, and it's an image tag which I did yesterday or the other day, so you should remember this. I just have the source attribute. And I'm gonna do um, the location for that one, which was in images, S1E1, which is the, the episode I'm on right now. And then uh, we'll do barcode raw first. And then uh, I'm not gonna do the width and height. I'll just let it figure that out. Although I really should. Yeah, I, I am. I'm gonna do the width and height. Sorry. Uh, let me figure out what that actually is. So for this barcode raw, this is, it's one, I know it's 120 wide because that's what I set it to when I generated it, but I don't know what the width is. I mean the height, so the height is 51. So it's 120 by 51. So that's good. 120 height equals 51, alt equals barcode image from there you go so that should be good enough for that image and good enough to check to make sure that it works and if it works it should just be able to copy and paste that same pattern and just change the file name for each of them so there it is except i loaded the wrong uh the wrong one you can see that it actually i forgot to add the tn part so that's actually the full size image but squished down to that size. So let me load the actual small image now by correct, correcting that file name, and now it appears correctly. So there's episode 181, very small, um, but what are you gonna do? 
All right, so I'm gonna copy and paste this image tag because every other image tag after this is gonna be very similar except the file name will be different. So here's the, uh, the average one. So now it's not barcode raw, it's barcode average. And I'm gonna say of averaged colors. Save those changes, refresh, and there we go. Um, you know, I wish there, I think I can make the color palette visualization look cooler than it does, but it's all right. So there's the, so now I'm in the color palettes one. So again, just need to change that. Here's the montage. Just need to change this one. Here's the plot. Was it hue plot? I think that's right. Okay, now I got this, I got the color palette one wrong. What did I do? So it's not palettes, it's palette. Right? Yeah, there you go. Um, and also I need to correct the size because the montage is actually, and the montage and the plot are different dimensions. So the montage, I can see here, this one is 59 pixels high. So I need to correct that. And then the uh, yeah, and then the plot image is let's see ninety. So I need to make those look right. And make that adjustment. Okay, there you go. And then finally, the slices, the Z projection. This one, I should also need to also need to check the size of this one. I know it's 120 wide, but I don't know the height. So the height on this one, if I can get it, is 67. So 67, and that file name is some frames.jpg, right? Because this is the one JPEG here. Is that capital sum? Yeah. Wait, is the thumbnail? No, the thumbnail is a PNG. That's confusing the way I did that. But as long as you double check and get the names right both places, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And you can imagine, you know, the rest of this filled in. Uh, I haven't done all of the visualizations for episode six yet because I haven't seen it yet and I didn't want to spoil it. But it'll basically just be filling this in. So to go to the second column, uh, if I, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole process of making those thumbnails again, but for episode two, I would simply put them in the next T, the next set of TD uh, places. So uh, episode two barcode would go here. Episode two average color would go here. Episode two color palettes would go here. You see I'm scrolling down. Episode two montage would go here. The hue plot would go here. And then the slices projection would go down here. So that, you know, then that, that's episode two. And then likewise, you would consider you all through all that. You know, looking at all this, I think it would also be interesting to look at each of them sort of in a closer comparison. So something like, I can imagine all the barcodes sort of stacked on each other. I think that would be kind of a nice composite image to, to look at to really get a sense of what the differences are between these. Um, that's a, that's a, a good next step. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make, I, I wanted to make links to these too, didn't I? So let me just do one of those to show you the process and then I'm gonna wrap it up. So uh, a link is done with an, a tag called A, it's the letter A, and the attribute href determines the target for that link. It's gonna be whatever the link is, is to. Uh, in this case, I want to link to this image, like not the thumbnail, but the one that is the full size barcode for this uh, episode. So that is barcode raw.png. And uh, the A tag opens and closes. I just need to put it opening before the image tag opens and closing after the image tag closes. And then I'm going to add a special little attribute here called target. And if you do target and then equals and then underscore blank, 
that will make sure that the link opens in a new window, which is what I want in this case. So that should be it for episode one barcode. So let's try it. So you can see it's a link now. And if I click it, um, yeah, there's the full size image. It opened it in another tab so I can view it at you know my, my leisure. It would be nice in a way to have that pop out, but this is actually maybe better because you can see it at full size. If I did pop it out, it would still be shrunk quite a bit because of the, the layout of this web page. But um, overall, I think that's, that's fine too anyway. All right, so that's, that is that full size barcode. Um, and I, you know, it's the same process for all these. I'll just do it one more time just, just to, to make it clear. I'll do it for the um, someone because that was the kind of stranger one. Uh, again, just the A tag opens and closes. And href just needs to be the file name that I want to appear here. In this case, it's going to be uh, some frames.jpg because that's the JPEG one. And then just target equals blank, underscore blank. Okay. Yeah, there you go. It's very big. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think that's probably good enough. I've gone for over an hour. It's a good time to stop and uh, take a break. So um, I hope that was helpful. I mean, I, I kind of went pretty far in this demo and I don't know if you came with me or not or who, who's coming with me at this point. Um, but you know, my, my hope is to kind of show you what's possible with a, a few uh, a few tools. Um, the, the thing that I did that's different this time that I don't usually do is I added this whole idea of a, a CSS framework, but I think that adds so much you know, elegance to your website, like it can add a lot of those little details that you don't even notice about most web pages. And, it, and just adding that Spectre framework can really go a long way. Um, there are lots of other frameworks, like I mentioned, I just happen to like Spectre because it's lightweight and I kind of am used to using it. So Spectre is a good one. Bootstrap is a great one too. Um, and you're certainly welcome to use all or any of those. Uh, they, they come with good documentation in most cases, so you can really just kind of follow the directions. Of course, you have to know what they're talking about. You have to understand the vocabulary. So those tutorials in Codecademy and Every Through Schools can hopefully, uh, hopefully get you that if that's something you want to try. Okay, so I think I'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks for watching. If anyone still is, I can't actually, I don't, I don't have my dashboard pulled up, but if anyone's still watching, thanks. Uh, I'm going to wrap things up here. I will be uh, talking to you all again next week because next week is the last week of class. So uh, I will be streaming on Monday, probably just Monday and Tuesday of next week. And that'll wrap it up because I think technically that's the end of the, of the semester. Uh, so uh, look um, forward to that, I guess. And uh, if you have questions with anything, please let me know or send me messages. I will be, uh, I'll send an announcement about this too because I know hardly anyone's watching, but um, I will be out of, uh, I will be traveling this weekend. I will be camping, so I'm, I might not have cell service. So I will, I will, I will do my best to help you via, you know, mobile data if I can. But um, I, I probably won't be able to respond very quickly or very thoroughly if you do get my, uh, if I do, if I am able to communicate at all. So I'm, I will be kind of back online, ready to go with that on Sunday evening probably. So hopefully you all can do okay, you know, without me. And uh, yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, I'm going to switch to the outro scene and uh, wish you all a good day. So bye. Where's my music? <laughs> trying to find my, my music. Uh, are you able to...